JavaScript is usually the love or hate programming language amongst developers. And yeah, while I can understand where all this hate comes from, the modern JavaScript is a completely new language than it was back in jQuery era. Mastering the modern features of JavaScript will make you love this language, will increase your productivity and will raise the bar for the code quality and readability. Hello guys, my name is Vadim and I'm a startup CTO and full-stack developer using JavaScript in production projects for over four years now. I recently finished my internship at Amazon, whereas I also use JavaScript uh, technologies to build a, a full-stack application both on front, front end and back end. In this video, I want to show you the top seven ES6 features that I use most often and improve my code quality and speed of development. Before jumping into it, don't forget to smash that like button and subscribe to the channel as it will help me uh, get started on this platform. Yeah, yeah, you can go ahead, I have plenty of time. Okay, thank you. Now let's go to the PC. The first thing that I want to talk about is of course arrow functions, which is a better and more concise way of writing functions in JavaScript. Arrow functions uh, syntax is as following, parentheses for the parameters, where we, we can write the parameters like param1, param2, and so on, followed by the fat arrow with uh, equal sign, followed by a block statement, or a directly an expression. And in case we have an expression, this value will be the return value from the function. So suppose that we have a following code, which was written in the old fashioned JavaScript, uh, and what it does, uh, it has an array of prices and we want to add the tax for each price. Uh, the tax is 10%. And what it does, it maps uh, through the array and applies a function, which we define here. For each price, we uh, multiply it by 1.1. .1. Okay, that's a valid uh, JavaScript, but we can do better and more readable. So the first thing that we can do is uh, let's take uh, this line and we can uh, put directly the function here which will be an inline function. For inline function functions we don't need the name so we can drop that one. Uh, in order to transform from a simple function to an uh, arrow function we will delete the function keyword. We have a parenthesis for the parameters. We add the fat arrow here and that's it we already have a perfectly valid arrow function. However, we can still simplify this arrow function by deleting the block statement and the return statement. And in case a arrow function has an expression instead of a block statement, this is the value that it's gonna be returned. So as we can see, it's much more readable than the previous one where we declare a separate function. And probably in this case, it doesn't make a lot of sense, but when you're working on bigger projects, uh, you'll use arrow functions way more than you think. The next feature that I love about ES6 is template strings. So first of all, let's look at how we were doing things uh, with normal strings. For example, in order to have a multi-line string, we had to uh, insert the slash n into the string. And the next thing is that constructing strings was pain in the ass, where we have to do a uh, plus a variable plus string, and we have to keep play, uh, track of um, spaces and so on. Uh, how we can do these things with template strings? Uh, let's have a look. So the first thing is, um, what is the syntax of a template string? It's the, this character, which is just under escape button. And using a uh, template uh, string, we can have multi-line um, multi strings like this. And the next feature is even better because uh, template strings allows us to construct strings much easier where we can insert the variable inside the string directly. So let's have a look how we will um, transform the previous statement with template string. First of all, we add the template string characters and we do my name is, and here we need to insert the name. For that, we add the dollar sign and the curly braces. Now we can insert any expression or JavaScript variable. 
so in this case we want to display name um, and I am the same dollar sign uh, bracket age years old so we see how much easier uh, this is uh, compared with the old version yeah of course this is just a simple example and you might think that it's not that useful but think about when having a big string for example usually that happens when we want to construct a post request so look at this uh, code and think about how it would look uh, without template strings I think it's obvious that template strings improve a lot the readability and the convenience of writing strings in JavaScript Okay, the next ES6 features that I really enjoy is destructuring. Uh, so let me start with a simple example. Uh, imagine that we have um, an array with a finish time of all the athletes that uh, has run a marathon. Um, then we want to display the time for the first three places. To do that, we will uh, have to uh, do separately assignment for the first place, second place and third place, assigning them from the array. How we can accomplish the same thing using the structuring in ES6? So the first thing that we see is that we declare the first, second and third uh, inside square brackets and we assign the array to, to them. And what that does, it takes the first variable and assigns the variable at index zero to it it takes the second one and assigns the uh, variable at index one, third one at index uh, two, which is the third item. So this is just simple pattern matching. So if we want, for example, to take the fifth value as well, but we don't need the fourth one, we just omit the fourth one and we take the fifth one here. And just with one line of code here, we accomplish the same thing as we accomplish with three lines here. Besides destructuring values from an array, in JavaScript we can also destruct properties from an object, and I think that uh, destructuring properties from an object is used much more often than destructuring arrays. So uh, let me give you an example. Uh, suppose that we have an object uh, game with the following properties, name, publisher, and year. And we want to display the next uh, line of code. Game name was published by the game publisher in game.ear. But imagine that we have this game dot game dot uh, a lot of times and we want to simplify the code. Uh, in that case, with previous JavaScript, we would need to um, take each uh, parameter from the game object into a separate variable uh, like this with three different assignments. And then we can do this uh, name was published by publisher in year. It's much simpler because we don't repeat game multiple times. Okay, it's good, but it's uh, obviously not perfect. And let's have a look how we can do the same thing in ES6 with destructuring. So first of all, let's go and comment out this bad code and have a look at the destructuring. So we def declare the constant name publisher and year and assign them uh, the game object. We surround the constant names with curly braces and that indicates that we want to destructure them uh, from an object, from this object. And what uh, JavaScript does behind the scene, it takes the first one uh, name and assigns game.name to it. After that it takes publisher and assigns game.publisher. And the next one it takes year and assigns game.year to, to it. And now we can display them uh, as following, like console log name was published by the publisher in year. It's much simpler and we destructure the properties in one single line. If we want to rename the variable while we are destructuring, for example, uh, in game uh, it's called year, but we want to be more specific here and say like publishing year, then we will do semicolon and then uh, give a new name, publishing year. And now this is the variable that is going to be used um, next, but the property in the object will still be a uh, year. So we don't need this game.year. Okay, that's it with uh, destructuring. Let's get to the next topic. Next one is the spread operator. And we oftentimes want to merge two uh, objects together or merge two arrays together. 
And the old way of doing that is, for example, array1.concat array2. Uh, the new way of doing it is uh, following, uh, for example, the array is equal to a new array, which uh, spreads the first array, then spreads the second array, and then we can, uh, of course, add any other values after that. And it will contain, uh, firstly, all the values from the array 1, then all the values from array 2, and the rest of the values. The cool thing about it is we can include other variables uh, between them, or in the beginning, uh, as following. So this is perfectly fine. Now, let's have a look at how spread operator can help us with objects. So for example, let's suppose that we have two objects, name parts, with first name and last name, uh, details with age and height, and we want to build a single object, person, that will have uh, the field's first name, last name, age and height. And this is how we would do that in the old JavaScript. Uh, we'll declare the object, we will assign to each field the specific field from the other objects, and then we will have what we need. However, this can drastically be simplified with spread operator and be written in a single line of code. So here we can see that the person is equal to an object in which we spread the name part and we spread the details. And what it does, it takes each field from the name part and makes them the field of a person, and then it takes each field from the details object and makes it the fields of a person. So it's completely the same thing as doing here, but in just one line. And the great thing is that after that, we can assign um, more variables here. For example, um, uh, weight is equal to 80, 60, okay. Another useful use case where spread operator can ease our work is sending arguments to a function. So let's uh, have a look at the current code. So we have an array uh, which is called square, which has coordinates of the four corners. Uh, and we have a function uh, is square, which receives the bottom left corner, the top left corner, top right corner, and bottom right corner. In bold style JavaScript, we would have to call is square and send uh, the first item from our array to the first argument, the second item to the second argument, and so on for all four uh, arguments. However, with spread operator, this can become much easier and we can uh, spread the square object uh, in the arguments of the is square function. And this way, our first element will go to the first argument, our second element will go to the second argument, and so on until the fourth one. The next topic is default arguments and rest arguments. So what is the default arguments? Uh, for example, let's look at the old style JavaScript, uh, how we were used to manage uh, uh, scenarios when the argument was undefined or null. So in the beginning of the function, we would check, for example, if uh, array is uh, null or undefined, then we, were, we would either uh, throw an error or assign it a default value, and the same thing, for example, for index. However, in ES6, we can declare default values to be assigned to function arguments in the next way. Uh, we have uh, argument name and then equal to the default value and whenever uh, array or index is sent uh, null or undefined then the default values will, uh, will be assigned to them. Regarding the rest arguments, this is a process where we bind the trailing arguments to an array in a function. So for example, we have this function where it takes the first argument and binds uh, all other arguments to this array others using the, this syntax. So we console log the first item and we console log the length of uh, the others array. And we call it with a bunch of uh, arguments. And when uh, we run it, we see the first item one, which is console logged here, and the length three, which is console logged here. And the others is an array containing all these trailing arguments for, for the function. I can show you that uh, it works, for example, if we don't send anything here, 
it will be uh, zero, an array of zero elements. The next topic that I already have been using during this video is let and const keywords. Let and const is the new way of declaring variables in ES6. Let comes in to replace the var keyword and it has some improvements. It is block scoped and it was introduced to solve uh, some of the common problems that var operator had. And here in our editor, we can see the old way of declaring a variable and here is the new way of declaring them. So var keyword is replaced with let keyword and there is a new way of declaring variables, which is const. And this will uh, prevent us from reassigning a new value to this variable. And we can see here that even uh, ID uh, complains that we attempt to assign a new value to a constant. That's it for today, guys. Thanks a lot for watching till the end. And if you enjoy this video, please subscribe to the channel uh, as there will be more videos of this type in future. And also you might want to check other videos on my channel. And by the way, guys, I do a live stream every Sat Saturday at 5 p.m. Uh, GMT time. So uh, come, come by, say hi. I'm doing their live stream uh, React Native development and I take uh, an application, for example, right now we are doing the Instagram clone, where we are cloning the whole UI uh, of Instagram in React Native. We, all, we are already at the fourth episode, but mostly the homepage is done, so check that out, it's really awesome. Okay guys, take care, stay hydrated and write clean code. Bye bye.